So we did want to talk about antennas because you're kind of yep. like the antenna guru over there. Mm -hmm. And um, Chuck built a new antenna and it's like a Cobra, oh, yeah. but, but not exactly. And um, yes, is. <laughs> what it's fed, it's fed with twin line. And then it has three wires that come out of the left and right side of this, of the center center insulator that, you know, the antenna goes, it meanders back and forth, back and forth. And the, I think the idea there is linear loading, right? Is, is what, what everybody says. And okay. um, I, I always get on this bandwagon around, I want to know what linear loading is. I want somebody to actually explain that to me and explain why it's a good idea or if it's a, or if it's a bad idea. <clears throat> and so, you know, I, I do what the normal person does. I, I go to American radio relay league. I look at my antenna handbook. I look in, yeah. I look in my, um, the amateur radio handbook and I, I've got tons of, of material like reference material I go through. What I can find is examples of linear loaded antennas. I can't find explanations of linear loading and how it works. Um, so I've been the last couple of days, I've been going down the rabbit hole, trying to educate myself a little bit about linear loading. And sure enough, somebody sent me one of your videos, uh, Colin, yeah, yep. with your adjust a wave. And it was the yes. one where you were operating it, um, at a certain height above ground at the beach and you were getting a different yep. reactions when your antenna based off the composition of ground. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so the, the spacing on that linear loading is really wide. It's like two foot spacing. And 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 with two foot spacing between the wires, so you're just straight up across and down. What I find is the effective length of wire is effectively the same as a full length antenna. The narrower you bring that linear loading together, you kind of need more wire to bring it to resonance, which is what I found because I, I, I played about with different um, different linear loading because some people will do it with doublets and stuff, so they'll use 450 ohm ladder line. And then they'll they'll short at the two ends and then use that for the use that for the antenna itself. Um right. so I'm just looking at what Chuck's actually got here. So that's very similar to what that is. Um this but you tend I to build, find yeah. You, you tend and, and what was the spacing between your wires on the linear loading, Chuck? My spacing is I used uh what do they call that the wire? It's just uh, it's ribbon wire. So okay. there's no it's real quite, spacing. I was gonna I was yeah. gonna do I had built spacers. I made, I designed spacers that were like about an inch apart. Yeah. But I wanted this to be kind of a portable antenna and that was not good. Now, now if you set up your house, that's the way I would do it. And I'd use bigger wire. And I explained that I would use bigger wire because the bigger wire would be a little more stiff yep. and it would, it would, it would lay better. Right. And I would do it that way. But like you said, say you say your antenna has to be 120 feet to be resonant where you want yep. it. Right. If you if you linear load like that, it's going to have to be longer than that. Is what you're saying? Because it's not going to be. It's not going to be half effectively. It's not going to be half. Yeah. So if you need it 120 yeah. and you need it to be 60, depending on that spacing, it's not going to be. It might only be three quarters of the width of that 120. Right. That's what it does. That's what I found. But it does. So the one I end up building was the this company makes the uh, the 40 meter, and that's what I bought. <laughs> but every time if this says 40, it'll do 80. Yeah. But 80 probably isn't very good. But yeah. it'll work. It'll tune. Yeah. I was well, actually was able to tune. I was actually able to tune 160 um to S to like a S2 or a yeah. two two to one. I wouldn't yeah. use it there. It's like yeah, it'd no. probably just kill kill something. I mean the reason I did this was because on a 12 meter spider beam, I was able to use so without using the last section, so eleven meters, I was mm -hmm. able to get 80 meters on that. And that's why I did it, because then that gives you 80 meters on a 40 foot mast on a bit and it's yeah. it's i think it's reasonably efficient um that that big spacing so you weren't really i don't think you were losing too much uh, on a just a wave with that but the big bonus was you weren't limited with power you could put as much power as you right. want through that thing and, and it'll take it it's it not like you're using a tr yeah you won't you won't fry a trap right so that was a big benefit yeah. for me I, well i built yours also and i think if you if you really wanted to I mean, it is tuned because it would tune like yours. I use the same pole actually. Um, yeah. I think I was one down just like you were, but if you if you take it out and like keep it raised, it would probably work better, right? That would yeah. You keep the the end up in the air, like keep set the it end on up the, in the air. I try and if you can keep the yeah. end up maybe four foot or something, I think it, it, it works better. Right. Uh, the well, ground the ground can start affecting it. 
Go ahead. Well, so, he gets right to the ground. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. I'm I'm not entirely convinced linear loading is a good idea, and so I, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about it and, and get some idea and perspective, and, I, and I'm perfectly coachable. But when when you look at the, the the problem is is that whenever you mention linear loading, people go to Callum. They say, "Hey, well, Callum says it works great on the DX Commander, and Callum's probably the most commonly referenced linear loader." Um, when you talk when you talk about amateur radio antennas these days, especially when you're in the YouTube community, and so um, <clears throat> I'm also not a really big fan of coils on the ground, like round mounted coils, because they become yeah. really resistive. They choke off a lot of your power, and you have tr tremendous efficiency hit. Right, so nothing beats a full size antenna. Yep. Um, when you look at linear loading, I started to think, hey, this sounds to me like a capacitance hat, right? So a capacitance hat rotates your phase essentially. Yep. And then makes an antenna appear longer than, than it really is. Um, but when you look at a linear loading antenna, when you have fold back, um, when, when you look at the fold back on that antenna, essentially what you're creating is a transmission line stub on your antenna, right? Because you have now you have two parallel conductors, mm -hmm. right? And, and so if those parallel conductors are close together, you get capacitive reactants where yep. you build a magnetic yep. field and the, the energy jumps from one to the other and they flow in different directions and when they flow in different directions putting a put, put putting a transmission line stub on the end of your antenna it doesn't radiate right because it cancels the, the energy you're just making a match yeah you're just getting it to match right, so essentially think, you're putting an lc match on the end of your wire right i i think it's horses for courses um so Roland HB9 VQQ, he did a paper. He's actually he, so he 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 done a comparison. So he used simul simultaneous whisper transmissions. He had a DX commander, uh, the, the classic. He had that, and he had an adjusted wave. So an, the adjusted wave was set on 80 meters. So one one. So the vertical was fully linear loaded, and the single radio was fully linear loaded, and he had that compared against a DX commander. Um, on 80 meters, so it was an inverted L up at seven meters across inverted L with a full load of radials, and he did the comparison between those two antennas transmitting through them at the same time, looking at the data running over it, and there was literally a hair between them. Depend depending on how you looked at it, you could have said that either mm -hmm. antenna won, right? And that was really interesting because that was real data um, transmitting at the same time into two different antennas and looking at. So that was quite interesting. So I think it depends depends what you're doing, what you want it for, uh, and, and the spacing you've got between that linear loading. Uh, and then um, um, our buddy Tom saying linear loading intends both inductor and capacitor together. It, right, so that's what, kind of what I was getting at. It's actually more of an yeah. LC circuit at the end of your of, of your antenna, which, which um, doesn't it, it doesn't radiate. Unless you're spacing between the foldover and the element are, is larger, then it becomes more inductive in nature, right? So that's when you have a magnetic field around both mm -hmm. of them that, that pass energy back through flux coupling, right? Yeah. And that's what you want. Now, um, the spacing between those wires varies depending upon frequency, right? So like with the spacing that might work for 40 meters doesn't work for 20 meters. And so in the if something like a DX commander, that doesn't matter, right? Because you have separate elements mm -hmm. for each one of those. Right. But in a linear loaded dipole, um, a linear loaded and fed half wave, a linear loaded doublet, something like that, it would matter because it's a multi-band antenna and that spacing will adjust the capacitance and the induction between mm -hmm. those wires, depending yep. upon the fundamental frequency you're transmitting on, right? Yep. Um, so I, so I, well, I start I, to say, does this make sense? Does, does this make sense or not? And when I see people build these antennas, generally they don't take spacing into consideration. They just fold it over, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, that's what and, I did. I did it for to make it, if I want to take it portable, because it's easy, right? I would never, I mean, I show, the, my antenna was for people that have like a really small lot, and it gets them on the air, and it's it's fairly, it's kind of almost invisible, because I'm using the, I'm using the, the, uh, the same wire for my feed line, which is tiny compared to coax, right? Yeah. If you could, if you could get that hung somewhere in a tree and just run that line away from the tree, but down a ways, and then you want to go, you kind of want to go at a ninety for a while, right, and then pull it out. But 
it gets it gets them on the with a decent antenna, especially if they can get it up high. I didn't have mine very high the other day, and yeah. it, it was not it was not anywhere near what my my doublet is forty to thirty sloper, and it wasn't near as good as that. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm, about I'm the forced, same amount of wire. Yeah, I mean, weird. it's like I'm I've got the sixty six foot doublet, and I'm forcing it to work on eighty, and the the, the, right. the pop star will match it. But if you think of the inefficiency on that, it's probably I think the estimation it's about two two three s points down on what would be a full size. But yeah. if you look at the signals that are eighty meters and what I'm going to use it for, what it's going it's to do good, around right? about Europe, it's you know, is that your total? What would be the point of linear loading it? There wouldn't be, you know. What's your total length? 60? 66. So it's thirty three a leg. It's maybe running, slightly longer I'm, than that. I'm running about one hundred and ten. I had yeah, so you're almost almost double than that. Almost double. Yeah. So and that's if you if you guys ever want a a good article, go to DX Engineering. Go to their and just put in um, multi-band doublet or multi-band dipole. And down at the bottom, there's a, an instruction on They give you a ton of information. Everybody everybody wants to run a four-to-one on it. And they go into an explanation why that's probably not the best setup. Although they said to do that on this antenna, and I didn't. I've got I've got ability to do it. Yeah. No, I don't do because, that. I do one-to-one. They, they, they say a one-to-one's yep. better because... Yeah, you can you can the the four to one can change your stuff to where it's hard to tune. Yeah. Now I run a four to one in my house because that's what I thought when I first did it, and I'd already bought. I'll probably build what, like what I built the other day, Ape, but I'll probably buy build a bigger one like on a, on a two forty. Yeah, it's, it's still a really frustrating antenna um, because I run it. I run it outside the house. It runs mm -hmm. basic, so it runs to a one to one. It's, there's three two forty think forty three cores. So mm -hmm. it runs through a really heavy duty one to one, and then there's exactly two meters of coax that then comes in. So there's into the back of the PAL star. A little bit, you know, mis mis planning. If I'd done it differently, I would have brought the it's true ladder line I'm using. It's, it's wide spacers, mm -hmm. it's, it's home brew stuff. I would yeah. have brought that. In, I would. It was a little bit less loss as well. I would have brought it right into the uh, the AT four K, but it, uh, which I might do over time. Because depending on the length of the ladder line, ladder line you're using or feeder, it will affect what bands you can get a match on. And 17 right. meters is a real problem with me. I can get all bands to match, 80 through 10, but I can't get 17 to match. So I have a different you know solution what, for 17. Yeah, what you could do, I'm, and that's something that the DX Engineering Info tells you how to calculate. It's in, it's in threes. You, you do your links in threes, multiples of three. And it explains how to do it in there. It's pretty, it can get really, really, if, if the short one doesn't work for you, it can get really, really long when you multiply a couple times out to reach. Yeah. We'll see. Like, I, don't I, know I just ran the, I just, I just ran the hundred foot that I, that my, my kit came with and it's, I can tune everything I want to tune. Yeah. 